On the first day of the playoffs, and things got wild. In Green Bay, the Packers played without Sterling, and the Lion King would become extinct in the minister's church. Would Brett Favre continue to be the leader of the pack, or would Dave Craig pull out a last-minute miracle? A hot time in South Florida. Chiefs, Dolphins, Joe, Dan, a showdown for two legends of the game. Marcus and the Chiefs look to power over the Dolphin D, while Miami resorts to trickery. A day of great catches, big hits, and emotions running high. The playoffs have begun. There's no gray area. We'll have all the action on Prime Time. Again, everybody, I'm Chris Berman. Welcome to the opening edition of Playoff Prime Time Wild Card Edition Part Uh. And uh, can't go it alone, of course. It's your time of the year, isn't it? Joe Theismann oh, is with us. Well, it's something like that. And uh, well, we have Montana and Marino. Right. I mean, we'll get to that shortly. What a way to open up uh, two intriguing matchups today. They really were. I think the first one, obviously, was with uh, Barry Sanders, was unbelievable. I think that was incredible. And then Marino was don't unbelievable. Give it away, but don't give it away. I'm don't, sorry. Don't give it away. That's why we have pictures. Okay. All right. See, there goes the oh. pen. That field goes up. Good. And I think it was off to the left. We'll get that during the break. At any rate, we begin wild card week. I've never done that before. On, uh, on hallowed playoff ground that had not been used uh, since 1982 and had been used only once since the famous Ice Bowl in 1967. The Lions and the Packers on the frozen tundra, or almost frozen tundra, of Lambeau Field. As expected, playoffs in the Norris Division, goaltending would be the key. And here we go, Lambeau Field. The Packers undefeated there this year, but they'd be without Sterling Sharp, perhaps for the rest of his career. The leader of the pack, Brett Favre, could he bring them to Shangri-La? First quarter, opening drive for the Packers. They win the toss. Favre to Robert Brooks playing the slot for the injured Sharp. What a great job by Robert Brooks. Here he runs a similar pattern that we used to see Sterling Sharp. But look at the throw and look at the catch. So on the same opening drive, third and three at the 30, Favre ignores the blitz, dumps it to Reggie Cobb, makes some nice moves down to the 12, first down, and the Packers out of the two-yard line, Mike Holmgren says, we script these things, it's fourth and goal, Dorsey Levins, like Tommy Dorsey, they're getting sentimental over you in Green Bay, seven to nothing, pack. Barry Sanders, would his mercurial feet do the work? Not on this afternoon, Joe. No way. Look at that Packer defensive line stay in their lanes. They give them no place to run. Barry, you can't go here. No, you can't go there. You go backwards, Barry. He got him. Fritz Shermer's defense doing a great job. Reggie White was absolutely individually brilliant with that breather on his nose. He's moving up the field. Watch with the, the bull rush that he does to Sean Bowens. That allows the sack. Unbelievable job up front. Late second quarter, the Packers leading 7-0. And they're going to run the end around to Robert Brooks. Watch, 76. Kim Hell, Harry Galbraith with a big block. And the Packers into field goal range. Chris Jackie had missed a 37-yard field goal, but from 51, squeezes it through. And the Packers lead it 10 to nothing. At this point, with three minutes to go in the first half yards, 184-8 for the Pack. Paul Horning didn't quite have that range, although he did on the ground. Dave Craig, he's got the range to Brett Perryman. And Perryman, what, what, he, uh, and down to the 10-yard line, but the Packers defense holds. So the very reliable Jason Hansen from 30 yards out, and it's no good. Vince smiling down from above. 10-0 Packers at the half. Minus six yards for that fellow Barry Sanders in the first half. Mike Holmgren's Packers lead still 10-0 second half. Fourth down and one at the 38-yard line. Edgar Allan Poe Bennett. Willie Clay says, quote the Lions, never more to the Nanook of the North. Wayne Fonce's team takes over. And Dave Craig. Packers did a good job on Herman Moore today, but Craig looking for the angular watch. And he leaps over Doug Evans, and it's down to the Packer 26-yard line. But Barry, Barry, quite contrary on this afternoon against the Packers. Well, look at the job that Wayne Simmons does. The middle linebacker is assigned to cover Barry Sanders. He stays with him on the screen. Now, this is Barry in one-on-one. -on -one. He shakes left, he shakes right. Simmons, number 59, what a great individual effort. Meanwhile, Brett Favre, with a score 10-3, gets hit what he thought was a little late and a little hard by the Sandman, Broderick. 
Thomas to look at Fart. Forget that he's a quarterback. He's going to take him up. And Pat Willing rushes to the defense of his fellow linebacker fighting the quarterback. Oh, by the way, the drive ends in a field goal. It's 13-3. But on his way to the Pro Bowl, Mel Gray stopped off at Lambeau Field. He's hurt, but you couldn't tell it here. Black at him go. And actually, Jackie does a good job of slowing down the play to perhaps save the touchdown. But the big play by Mel Gray gives Wayne Fonce's club some hope. That sets up Dave Craig, and now we're early fourth quarter, from the four to Brett Perriman, and he beats George Ice T. gets 13 10, but boom, spikes it in his face. Starting a fracas, they would get a flag for taunting, and they'd have to kick off from way back, although on that particular drive, the Packers punted. That particular drive had didn't cost the Lions. Lions get the ball back, and they're still trying to establish Barry Sanders. Barry's going to go right here, but the Packers are going to stay in their lanes. They follow, follow. Oh, he's down. Good job by Don da uh, Davey, and then Pop puts him off. But Sanders, you got to try and get him the ball somehow. No, you cannot get him the football today. 13 carries for minus one. It's unbelievable. The Packers, of course, minus Sterling Sharp. Kick a field goal, five and a half to go, 16 to 10. Lions try him out of charge. Barry Sanders. He now uses a decoy with the Flea Flecker. Craig to Perryman. It's short of the first down. Third and four at the 28-yard line of the Packers. Craig to Rodney Holman. Turns it upfield. George Coons drags him for the first down. Two incompletions makes it third and ten at the 23-yard line. Craig. Sanders staying in the block. He hits Aubrey Matthews. And it's fourth down. And Dave Levy says we're going to go for it. Would he drive his Chevy to the Levy? The Levy would not be dry. Craig with the sneak. Keeps the chains and the clock gone. Bonson, Holmgren, nervous, third and seven at the 10. Bryce Pop, 95 on the way to the Pro Bowl. He stopped off at Lambeau Field with the big sack. So, fourth down at the 17. Here's your ball game. Minute 45 to go. Craig to Moore. He catches it, but he's out of bounds. Was they rule out of bounds. Was he pushed out, Joe? I don't think so. I think he's going to come down out of bounds anyway. Look, he's up. You see that foot land so far out of bounds. Boom, no way he'd be him. Look at it again. George T. No. He wouldn't have had it. So the Packers run out the clock, and then with just a few seconds to go in a play of mild interest around the country, Craig Hetrick takes the punt, and rather than kneel down and give the trade a shot, gets out of the end zone. It's a safety to make the final score pack 16. And the Lions 12. Green Bay remains undefeated lifetime in the playoffs at Lambeau Field at 6-0. Detroit still looking for their first road playoff win since 1957 when they won at venerable Kizar Stadium. But on this day, no Barry Sanders to the Packers credit and also no Sterling Sharp, but one large Robert Brooks. Sterling Sharp is a, is a great player, and in my opinion, he's a Hall of Fame player. And anytime a guy like that can come out and uh, you know give you any type of advice, it's gonna help. And you know, and Sterling, uh, when he's out there, he keeps me loose, you know, because you know we're South Carolina boys and that kind of thing. So he's always cracking his jokes and just being Sterling. Bears the best running back in the league, and uh, you know I think we that was a big feat for our defense. How did you do it? I mean, what was the plan in stopping this guy for one? The plan was attacking, man. For all of us to get up field. One thing that we weren't doing the last time we played him is getting up field and we were leaving gaps open for him to get through but uh today we closed the gaps up and uh we just attacked him and uh we put together a complete effort i think our guys were convinced they had to come off the ball and get up the field and decrease the running lanes and 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 as a result did a good job of getting off blocks and that turned into excellent uh, uh, pass rush most of the day as well so i think the front seven coming off the ball like they did was really the key for us we had uh, a very difficult time of um, uh, controlling the line of scrimmage. Uh, probably the first game that, uh, since I've been here as a head coach that uh, a team dominated our, our, our line of scrimmage like the Minnesota Vikings did. Again, let, let, let's make this clear, Joe. 13 carries, guy had 18.83 during the right. 13 carries, minus one yard. By the way, Detroit ran for minus four yards today. That's a new playoff low. Buffalo in 63 against the Boston Patriots ran for seven. And the New England Patriots in Super Bowl 20 against the Bears ran for seven. They're out of the books. The Lions are in. Packers defense looking like it did the first half of the year when it really carried the team, Joe. The Packers defense, Chris, did a sensational job up front. And you heard each Reggie White, you heard Fritz Sherman mention the fact that they stayed in their lanes, that they were aggressive. That's a big thing about Barry Sanders. If you wait for Barry to dictate to you, he's going to go where you can't catch him. But if you get a little bit aggressive, you have a chance to corner him, wait for help to come, and then get him on the ground. We take a guy, Joe, with 18 touchdowns, and we're talking about Sterling Sharp out of the lineup. He may not score as much, but the Packers said, and we saw it on game day, that 
they were not going to change their offense. Robert Brooks moves into the flanker spot, and they really didn't change the offense, no, did they? No, they didn't. They did a great job of staying exactly what got them to the dance. They stayed, went with everybody they had, except that Robert Brooks put on the uniform of Sterling Sharp. Here he is in the slot, runs the reverse. That's exactly what you'd see out of Sterling Sharp. Now he starts in motion, comes back the other way, and catches a ball over the middle for 20-yard gain. The same thing you'd see. Now Brooks runs a little out pattern, eight yards. Watch him get up the field. Good physical job, makes the catch, gets out of bounds, just like you'd see Sterling do. Brett Favre reads the blitz on this play. They got him in the slot. It worked before against Detroit. I'm gonna throw it again. Nice job just hanging it up. Make the adjustment, make the catch, just like Sterling would. Brooks catches the slant now for 15 yards to help set up the field goal that makes a big difference for him. I really think that Robert Brooks has done an excellent job filling in. And I give Mike Holmgren a lot of credit by saying, listen, we're not going to abandon what we've done. We're going to stay with what we've got. But Levin scores a touch of Mark Chamora catching. Didn't even catch a pass to late right. November. He had a big game today, 5 for 75, the tight end. But really, the number, Joe, is Barry Sanders. When he plays on the Packers' home field, which he's done three times in the last two years, look at what he gets. Uh, well, we're, here we go. The away game, 75, 47, and minus one. Barry Sanders against the Packers on the road. Not the same sort of runner that Barry Sanders is against the rest of the league or against the Packers at home. Amazing job. But well, that chart is going to go like minus 50 the next time he plays at the <laughs> Packers. Montana Marino. Does it get any better than this? We'll show you what happened at Joe Robbie Stadium. M's NFL Prat Chat is brought to you by McDonald's. What you want is what you get at McDonald's today. Coming up at the top of the hour, Mark Fields in Washington State playing Baylor in the Alamo Bowl. Travis Bowie, Davy Crockett, they'll all be on hand in San Antonio at the top of the hour. We're on hand on NFL Prime Time Wild Card Edition. Marino, Montana, Dolphins, Chiefs, round one, Joe Robbie Stadium. Stick around. Wild Card Prime Time. Joe Montana, Dan Marino, together they've thrown for 85,000 yards. You add it up, that's about 48 miles. They own four Super Bowl rings, all of them, of course, belonging to Mr. Montana. Would it be one for Joe's thumb, or could it be one for Dan's hand? One of them would get a jump start towards Super Bowl 29, and the same Joe Robbie Field two fortnights hence. Here we go, a game of epic proportions. Montana, Marino together on the field, opposing starting quarterbacks for the first time in 10 years, but Marcus Allen looked so good last week against the Raiders, looking good this week against the Dolphins, Gaines nine. Next play, Allen again. We go left, eight more yards, the Chiefs impressive on their first drive. Then Montana on third down of the year, dumps it to Marcus, in coverage, makes the catch, 15 yards and a first down. Montana now with Allen working, play fake to Marcus, rolls right, hits his tight end, Derek Walker at the two. Then second and goal from the two, Montana play fake to Walker. Eight times this year, the Chiefs have scored on their opening drive. Don Chula wants to play a provisional. Yeah, but watch the play on this. Joe Valerio, who's caught a few touchdowns this year, is the tackle eligible. He draws the coverage, the goal line pass to Walker, touchdown. Joe perfect on the opening drive. So down 7-0, Marino gets his turn. Marino to guys you never heard of. Mike Williams for 22 yards. Marino, he you've heard. Irving Fryer. And then watch this. Is it Duriel Harris to Tony Nathan? Almost. Fryer to James Saxon. That sets up Bidey Pomley rumbling into the end zone. They smeared him. We're tied at seven. One drive for the Dolphins, one touchdown. So now, Neil Smith needs the bigger Band-Aid because the defense has to stop. But Brian Cox's Miami defense also struggling. Montana, Jack B. Kimball, Jack B. Quick, Kimball Anders, look at him go! Breaking tackles, he could go all the way. 57 yards, two drives, two touchdowns, 14-7 Chiefs. Shula with words for Brian Cox. Well, I, you know what he's going to do? He's going to say, now, Brian, listen, you can't hit him with your shoulder. You have to try and tackle him. You've got to hold on to him. We don't want to see Joe's hands in the air. 
Well, the second drive for Miami, Joe. Marino, oh, never! Let me tell you about Keith Jackson. 21 yards leads to a field goal, 14 to 10. Marty Schottenheimer gives Allen a rest, gives it to the rookie, Greg Hill. He gains 11 yards. And then the intensity, Willie Davis, Gene Atkins coming to blows. Next play, after they separate the combatants, Montana, where's the rush? 25 yards to J.J. Burt. Mean Joe Green says, I could have rushed. Late in the half, Kansas City has kicked a field goal, so three drives, three scores for them. Fourth and three, Marino avoids the rush. Hits O.J. McDuffie. Boy, every time he hits him, it's a first out, isn't it, Joe? He Third and goal. Unbelievable Mar job. Now, here it is. Marino with a beautiful job of backpedaling to Ronnie Williams. Three drives for them, three scores, 17 all. He just looks people off. But look at the niftiness. Everybody says Dan can't move. Ha! Yes, I can. Touchdown. Shootout, yes. Seven drives, four touchdowns, a field goal, and then the end of the half. Don Shula says, we would like a lead, please. He has seen Bitey. He's diving. Oh, my God. 25 yards down to the six. Two plays later from the seven. Marino to another diving. Diving Fryer. Touchdown. And the Dolphins have their first lead of the afternoon in the third quarter, 24-17. Looks like the frozen tundra of Joe Robbie Stadium, doesn't it? Derek Thomas, Neil Smith, we have to make something happen. Well, now Miami's up 27-17. Kimball Anders, left side, eight yards and a first down. Next play, Montana. Derek Walker between two defenders for 15. Marcus Allen ran brilliantly and hard for 12 yards. She's first in goal from the five. J.B. Brown, the first turnover today by either quarter against either quarterback. It was huge. He returned it to the 24, and Joe got anxious. Bad decision by Joe. That's exactly what he did, Boom. He tried to force the ball into Eric Martin. He's well covered by Brown. You just can't force him in. Even the great ones make mistakes. So Don Shula's squad continues to lead it by 10. Kansas City, another chance with nine minutes to go. The swing pass to Greg Hill. Cuts it upfield for 12 yards. Now the ball at midfield. Montana to the rookie Lake Dawson inside the 44. Next play, Marcus Allen, look at this, bouncing, bouncing. Look at him, put the shoulder down and keep running, but Michael Stewart pulls the ball out. They call it a fumble. Second turnover, Marcus didn't really complain, but it was a close call. Michael Stewart is so strong. Watch how he grabs the ball. Now keep an eye on his feet. Is Marcus on the ground? Maybe, but Stewart's feet were inbounds. It was an unbelievable call. Here it is again, right there. See his little tootsies? Right foot down, I have the ball. Now watch where his other foot is. There's the left down, there's the right down. Yes, he did get possession. The Chiefs know that time was running out. Montana's last chance drive stopped deep. Will it be the last game for Joe Montana? I think Joe will take a month or so and decide what he wants to do next year. But right now, it's the Dolphins. What do they want to do next week? They want to keep playing, and that's what they're doing. Miami is on to San Diego for a game at the Murph next Sunday afternoon, so they get the eight days, so they get the good rest. So the ep boy, the way this game started, I mean, each team get the ball, get a score. Get the ball, get a score. Well, in the first half, uh, the quarterbacks, Joe, it was unbelievable. What were the numbers? 12 of 15 for Montana, right. 14 of 16 for Marino. Do you have a feeling this will be a four-quarter shootout or one of the defenses finally step up a little bit? I had a feeling sooner or later, Boomer, one of the defenses was going to step up. You just can't continue for four quarters like that and be as hot as both quarterbacks were. You know that somewhere along the line, somebody's going to try and force the ball in and something's going to have to happen. Somebody's got to come up with a big play. Miami's defense did. Well, final numbers are Montana 26-37 to 314. Marino 22 of 29, 257, and four of them were drops. Right. Now then. Let's go to the running game. We saw Marcus run hard. That Monday night game a few weeks ago, in the game won by Miami Big, Bernie Parmley had a big game. Kansas City knew they had to at least do something to stop Miami's running. They didn't do enough, did they? Well, one of the great things that Miami has done lately is they don't just count on one guy running the football. Bernie Parmley does a good job. He starts out. Then they bring in Irving Spikes. He pounds away at you. Then they bring in Aaron Carver. Now, here's a guy who punishes, running, or who punishes defensive backs trying to make plays. So you're not just getting one steady running back. You're getting a series of a bunch of guys coming at you, all of them fresh. Well, today, Parmley 57 yards, Spikes 49 yards. It's all told 31 132. Exactly 132 yards for. running to off, I, I go along with Marino, balanced offense. Marino over Montana. Ten years after, it was Montana over Marino in Super Bowl 19. Marino also erases a record that he was tied with Joe for 
most consecutive games in the playoffs with at least a touchdown pass. By the way, he's played 11 playoff games and he's thrown one at all of them. Montana streak ended last year in Buffalo in the title game. So Marino 11 in a row, Montana 10, and then you saw the other names, the Snake and John Elway. When we return, game balls. You're gonna have to give out a lot of them, I think. Stay with us. It's almost four. Eastern up until kickoff, so at 12.30. It's a half hour show, and then prime time again, 7.30 to 8 Eastern tomorrow night, and then there will be eight prime time players from the opening day of the playoffs. Well, you hate to be obvious, but it's hard to avoid the stare, the glare, and the performance of Dan Marino. Avoiding the pressure with a beautiful play to Ronnie Williams for a touchdown to tie the game. Opening drive of the second half. Remember, Marino never worked with the lead until this pass to Fryer in the third quarter. 22 of 29 for 257, two touchdowns, no interceptions. Dan Marino gets my game ball, Joe. You've got a few. Am I? Well, actually, I wish I could give a few. Mine's going to go to Fritz Sermer, their defensive coordinator. What a terrific job he did all day. His defense gave Barry Sanders nowhere to run. The safeties were there to fill the hole when they had to be, and they put constant pressure on Dave Craig. Great job also by having Doug Evans cover Herman Moore instead of getting the mismatch with Terrell Buckley on him. Sanders only 13 carries, minus one yard. Lions offense, 171 yards total. And guess what, folks? We will be back. MCI presents the AT&T True-False Quiz. True or false? AT&T always saves you money. False. Millions paid. Miami over Kansas City, 27 to 17. After the game, Joe Montana. Would it be his last appearance? It's always disappointing. When, when, you know, when you get into the into the playoffs, uh, every team expects to go further, and uh, that's the way we were. This team has a lot of talent and a lot of ability, and um, you know we we played another good football team that, that was hot. So. Joe, is it your intention to come back next season? Well, yeah. You know, it's like asking a fighter after he lost the championship out is are you gonna fight again you know, it's, it's, you know you feel low but yeah the game's fun i'm having fun with it what do you see for joe montana's future do you see him coming back uh, i i can't speculate on it i really can't I, uh, we've had no discussion about it uh i think that uh, clearly he and his family will sit down and evaluate it if i were a betting man and i'm not uh, i would bet he'd be back so now we know the playoff picture of the AFC. Miami's at San Diego. That's a Sunday game. The winner of the Cleveland-New England game tomorrow will be at Pittsburgh next week. That's a Saturday game. The NFC playoff picture, if the Vikings beat the Bears tomorrow, Minnesota will be at Dallas Sunday. Green Bay will be at San Francisco on Saturday. If the Bears win, then it would be Chicago at San Francisco, Green Bay at Dallas. So we got to wait till tomorrow to know the NFC. The AFC picture is very clear. Well, I'll tell you what is clear. The cheese heads cheese are very head. happy. It's pretty good here. It's New Year's, eh? You got cheese crackers, a cheese Absolutely. tie, and Dan Marino's dream is still alive. Kansas City Chiefs, valiant, but losers at Joe Robbie Stadium. Great what a beginning. Spot. Is it good? It's good. Is spot. it Limburger, so Munster, or too. is it Swiss? Packers pretty good job. Good. For Joe Theismann, I'm Chris Berman. Thanks for watching Primetime. Happy Alamo New Year. Bowl is coming up next. Dave Sims, Doc Walker, Washington State. Baylor, San Antonio. What more could you want, eh? Wow, you here. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. We're deep in the heart of Texas for the final game of 1994. The youthful Baylor Bears against the experienced Washington State Cougars in the second Builder Square Alamo Bowl. Lightning in a bottle best describes the Baylor offense, relying on its big play capabilities to earn co-champion status in the Southwest Conference. Led by true freshman quarterback Jeff Watson, the Bears use both air and land on their trek to San Antonio. The explosion for Washington State comes from the other side of the ball with a defense that yielded but 12 points per game. Known by their faithful as the Palouse Posse, the 25th ranked Cougars are led by Pac-10 Defensive Player of the Year, Mark Fields. The curtain on 1994 closes with a big play against the big hit. With one certainty, something's got to give at this year's New Year's Eve party.
final college football game of 1994 from San Antonio, Texas. It's the second annual Builders Square Alamo Bowl. 